So in today's video, I'm going to be looking at a vintage guitar. This vintage guitar here, which is a 1979 Yamaha SG-1000. So in the video, we'll be looking at the specs of the guitar. We'll be listening to a lot of sounds from the guitar. So let's have a closer look at the guitar. So as we can see, there's definitely some wear and tear on this, all around the edges. I'm not sure if somebody's actually sanded that down. Now that black mark there, I'll put a link to my original video, was actually, I think it was like a logo from a bar in Tokyo. The pots there, the uh, tone pots, are coil splits as well. Yamaha pickups. So uh, a few scratches, and look at the hole, look at the hole there. So that goes all the way through the guitar. I mean, I don't think it's a bullet hole. I mean, it'd be great if it was. What a story. Look at my guitar, it has a, has a bullet hole. So I replaced the pick guard. Well, I got a pick guard, there wasn't one on it um, when I arrived. Um, the switch, I can't remember if I bought a, a switch tip or not. Now around the sides, definitely some... Wear and tear. Now somebody has been at this with sand and paper. Uh, I'm not quite sure why you would do that. The fingerboard is ebony. It's not been refretted. That's the original frets. Nice inlays as well. I mean, it's it cleaned up really, really well. So the one thing we had to do, sorry, my friend Mike had to do, was replace a bit of binding there um, at the top of the neck on the base side. Now I haven't found two screws to hold the truss rod cover on. Um, I need to actually plug the original holes underneath the tuners as we can see here are ever so slightly tarnished and the cloudy finish on the headstock so here's the pickup cavity and you can see the neck tenon now like a lot of Japanese guitars from this era as well as being glued it does have a screw there's the SG-1000 pickups and on this one um, I think at some point it's had SG-1000 on it but it doesn't seem to be on it now, I don't know if it's been cleaned off, I don't remember doing it, but it may well be me. And the cavities are all shielded as well with shielding paint, so everything is a little bit tarnished. But look at that. See, I think this might be a screw hole, maybe this guitar was held on the wall of the bar, um, where I had the logo painted on there. So I love this, I haven't cleaned this off. If anybody can speak Japanese, please let me know what that says. And there's the other side of the hole all the way through. Now, the control cavity for the uh, the switch that did break, look at all the sand in here, what, why would you sand that? I mean, I get that people try to make their guitars look old, but I'm not entirely sure why you would sand the heel and the neck. So it's like a three-piece neck, I think maybe there's wings on either side as well, maybe five-piece neck. Again, a closer look at the tuners, very slightly tarnished, um, from all the way back in 1979, serial number, but everything works, everything works fine. Look at this, um, I posted on Facebook when I got this guitar to say the bridge and tailpiece were very, very knackered as we say in Scotland. And one of my friends sent me a message saying, well I've got a bridge and tailpiece from a 1979 SG 2000. Do you want them? I'll just send them through. So these are from an SG-2000. Couldn't believe it. The control cavity, look at the these um, the big pots there. Coil splitting. Um, I'm glad I, I think I had to. I think I took one of the pickups out because it wasn't working properly. And I had to uh, wire this back up. My goodness, it's quite, it's quite complicated. So that was the work that I had done just to get it up and running. I mean, I think that was the most important thing when I got it. I thought, you know, it looks it looks in pretty bad shape, but underneath I thought I can I can maybe resurrect this without you know investing too much into it because I wanted to make sure that I enjoyed playing it. 
and I wanted to make sure that it sounded good as well. So I didn't really do that much. I say huge thank you to my friend who gave me this hardware. So what could I have done? Quite a lot of people commented on my original video to say if they got this guitar, they would probably invest the money in getting it restored, you know, restore it to factory specs, get it nice and shiny. And that was an option. I mean, quite an expensive option. But I thought, like, this guitar, as it is, has character, has a lot of character. I mean, it has a big hole in it. I don't imagine too many people have a Yamaha SG that has a big hole in it that looks like a bullet hole. And after playing it at a few gigs, people sort of commenting like, oh, that's a cool looking guitar, like it looks, it looks worn. It just looks like an old vintage guitar. So I decided against getting this done, getting it all refinished and getting it back to, back to factory specifications. I'm just, I'm just going to rock it as it is. So let's listen to some sounds. <laughs>
Yes, yeah, so apologies again for the blues whittling. So what do I think of this guitar? Am I glad I got it? Because when I made the original video, like at the time video was titled, this is the worst guitar I have ever imported. And I genuinely think at that point in time, when I saw the mess this was in, I thought, I don't know if I can resurrect this. You know, it just it looks absolutely trashed. But with the minimum of work, thanks to some of my good friends, this is this was up and running with, with not a huge outlay in terms of getting new parts and stuff like that. So this guitar really does play great. It really does sound great. I'm really glad that I got it. I'm glad that we took a bit of time to, to get it up and running. I'm also glad that I haven't I haven't got it back to to looking pristine and new. It's just it's just a cool looking guitar. I'm I'm really pleased with it. I'm quite taken with it doing gigs and stuff like that. So, so there you go. That's my 1979 Yamaha SG1000. Now for the final part of the video, a quick two and a half, three minute tune that I put together, which I think most of the other sounds in this video were kind of rock sounds. I think this one has a few sounds which maybe people would, would get out of this guitar. Maybe people who are influenced by that sort of 70s, 80s, more kind of alt punk indie sort of goth thing so hopefully hopefully that's what it sounds like to some people as ever it's a privilege and a pleasure bringing you content on dunsey's guitar world cheers for now